Hey, hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia, and today we're taking a look at the latest spin-off from the extremely popular pandemic. This is Fall of Rome. In this game, just like in the other pandemic games, the players are going to be working together in order to stop something bad from happening. And that is, in this case, the spread of the barbarian hordes who are encroaching on Roman territory, hoping to make it all the way to Rome and sack the city. And so the players are going to be using their unique powers. They are going to be using legions to fight back the barbarian hordes. And they are going to be ultimately attempting to ally with these different barbarian tribes in order to win the game. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at how this all works together. We'll come on back after that and I'll tell you what I think of it and how I compare this to the other Pandemic games. Here we're taking a look at the game already in progress. We're a few turns in and I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you the things you are attempting to accomplish, how you win, how you lose, and the actions you can take in the game. So, in order to win, we need to ally with all five of these uh, barbarian tribes down here. And you are going to do so by discarding cards of the matching colors and allying with them. However, it's not necessarily the only way you win. You see, you can, instead of allying with a group, you could just wipe them off the board. And if, at the moment that happens, you are allied with everyone else, or all of the other ones that haven't been allied with are wiped off the map, then you also win. So let's say, for example, that I have allied with all four of these, except these right here, the Visigoths. If I can wipe them off the board so that all of the cubes for them are in the reserve, that's a winning condition right there. And so that's what you're attempting to do. The way you lose is by having too many of these declines happen, and so having this marker reach all the way down here, by running out the player deck, by running out of a cube when you need one, and so forth, all right? Uh, the turns go like this. Each player is going to get four actions, then that player is going to draw two player cards, and then we are going to invade cities. So actions are as follows. You can march. You can take your marker, and you can move to an adjacent city that is marked by one of these traveling roads. You can, when you move, take up to three legions with you and these are the legions they are going to help you fight the barbarians you can sail sailing entails uh, moving from a port city that has the anchor symbol to another port city anywhere but you must discard a card matching the color of the city you are going to being aware that some of them do have multiple colors so let's say i want to go from here all the way to narbo here i could discard an orange card or a white card, and I could, uh, just like when I am moving, marching, I could take some legions with me, up to three legions. I can fortify, which is discard a card of the location I am in, to put down a fort like this one here, and so if this player discards the matching card, they can leave a fort there. The forts are going to help you recruit more uh, legions, and they are also going to help support those legions in case they are attacked by barbarians. You can recruit uh, armies. And so if you are somewhere that has a fort, such as the yellow player here, you can recruit a number of legions from the reserve here equal to wherever this recruitment track is currently sitting. At the beginning of the game, that means three legions. It continues to drop as more of the revolt cards are drawn from the deck. And so let's say this was all the way down here. I choose to do the recruit action, I get two legions with me. There can be more than three, but I can't march with more than three. I can't leave with more than that. I could, uh, besides that, I could battle. Battling entails uh, rolling the dice up to the number of legions that are with me and dealing with the results. Let's say I want to battle right there. I'm going to roll two dice and I am either going to be forced to eliminate barbarians, eliminate legions, or possibly trigger the special power on my character card. Every character card is going to have some standard powers, powers and one that is triggered by the eagle symbol on the dice, okay? And so I would remove barbarians, remove legions, and so on. I can also plot. Plot is uh, passing one card from one player to another. You both have to be in the same location, and you have to pass, give, or take 
the card that matches that location, all right? So say we're both in Bordigala here. I could, for one action, give you that card or take that card from you. You can also forge an alliance. Forging an alliance is how you attempt to get uh, these alliances built and how you try to win the game. You have to be somewhere where there is a barbarian of that color. And so let's say I could be, uh, the, as the yellow player, I could be right here with this uh, green cube, that barbarian. And if I discard four green cards, I ally with them, I cover this up. Now they still keep coming, they still keep attacking, revolting, all of those things. But I am closer to winning the game and there is one new power that is available to me now. And that is enlisting barbarians. You see, once I've allied with them, I can discard a card of the matching color, say a green card, to turn all of the barbarians there right into legions. So I would put this back and I would replace it with a legion. That's very important, especially later on in the game, because your recruitment ability starts to diminish. And so you want to make sure you do that. Those are all of the actions you can do. You're going to do four of them. So you might, you know, move, attack, uh, move again, and recruit, let's say. Once that's done, you're going to draw two player cards from the deck over here. So I would draw one, two, whoop, one and two cards. And you put those in your hand. You, of course, have a hand limit of seven cards, as you always do. And then once that is done and you go ahead and add those cards to your hand, you are going to invade cities equal to the invasion rate. So at the beginning, it's two and it continues going up. Those are going to be uh, drawn from here and they're going to show you where you invade. Now, this is a little bit tricky, uh, but the way it works is it shows you an invasion path and it shows you a highlighted city. In this case, it's blue. It's over here, Constantinopolis. And you are going to first check if there are any barbarians there. If there are, you add another one. If there are not, you then have to, from that spot, start moving backwards, following the path listed here, the invasion route, until you do find some barbarians, and then they would have marched from that spot on, so you take one from the reserve and put it at the next spot. As another example, we have over here the, uh, the Vandals. Their marching path is very, very long. And so here we have one in Athens, way over here, but there's nothing there. So we work our way back following this path until we do find one. And there is one here. So it would go in the next spot in the marching path. But if this legion is there, then we have a new thing to deal with. You see, if there's no one there, we simply add our cube and we move on to the next card. But if there are any legions there, they're going to be attacked and they're going to stop these barbarians from showing up and so this legion would die if that happens and this cube this barbarian would not show up now let's say there are three barbarians there if this if this cube would show up there this barbarian would show up it's going to ambush all of these characters and they are all going to die and the cube will not show up but if these legions are supported either by having a fort there or by having one of us there then a single one will die, not all of them. And so you want to make sure that you are sometimes leaving them behind to stop the spread of the barbarians and slow down the game so you can accomplish your objectives. That's largely it. There's a couple of other things. Uh, you've got special abilities that are going to allow you to take uh, unique actions in the game and to represent the corruption in Rome at the time, these give you two different powers. The first one, a, um, a power that's a little bit weaker than the following one, and then one you can take, the souped up power, that if you choose to take, you must decline Rome by one. So in this example, we have here, during the next invade city step, draw two fewer cards, great, or if you choose to decline Rome, you can skip that step entirely. That's your call, that's your choice. Do you want to push this decline? Is that safe? Uh, do you think you're going to be able to keep it from getting all the way to the bottom and therefore win the game? If you never use these, are you wasting a possible resource? These are all considerations to think about. And then lastly, we have the characters here who are going to have one or two specific powers. And then, as I said, an eagle power across the bottom. 
This will let you add legions to your city, no matter if there's a fort there or not. You can also add one legion to a fort, no matter if you're there or not. Some of them are going to allow you to uh, do the plotting action a little more easily, pass cards around. Some of them are going to allow you to draw special event cards from the set-aside ones. But uh, this power, for example, is extremely strong. When you draw cards, you draw three and put one back on top. You get to discard cards from your hand without spending an action to draw a special event. But in combat, uh, they are very weak. In fact, if you roll the eagle, you have to remove a legion from your city. That's a negative power. Some of them are uh, going to be fantastic fighters, such as this one. When you battle, you lose one fewer legion than you normally would. Very strong. And if you roll the eagle, you remove two barbarians from your city. And all sorts of different things like that. So there you go. That should give you an idea of everything that's going on in Pandemic Fall of Rome. So let's go back up top. Let me tell you what I think of it. And there it is. So let's go ahead and talk about this, okay? I, uh, I'll start right off the bat with saying Pandemic, the base game of Pandemic, is my favorite game of all time. I adore that game, and I have pretty much enjoyed all of the spin-offs they've done. Some more than others, certainly, with the low point being the previous standalone game, this uh, sort of around-the-world series that they're doing. The last one was called Rising Tide, and in that you were attempting to stop the spread of water moving into the Netherlands by keeping it out uh, and, uh, you know, building up uh, defenses around the the, uh, the nation. And so in this one, of course, as I said, you, you're dealing with the barbarians and the Roman Empire. So I'll start with the things I liked just a hair less, but again, I really like all of these games, and this one, spoiler alert, is no exception. I think it is a fantastic game. But here are a couple of the things that uh, I, I wish I would have done a little bit more with. So replayability. Still great. Lots to consider. Lots of different variables that could go one way or another. But as opposed to, uh, say, uh, you know, Rising Tide or, for example, Iberia, there's no modules. There are no variants included in this box. There is a solitaire mode, uh, which is different from just playing solitaire, as in, you know, you playing multiple hands, because in this solitaire mode, you are going to have three characters, but a single hand of cards you are playing with, and some cards in reserve that you are going to put beside the board that you can possibly trade in and out of your hand. So it's an interesting mode. It's challenging, but it is uh, captivating and really well implemented. It's a neat concept, neat way to play solitaire. Uh, but that's what I showed you. That's basically it. There is no variant included. The other games did do that, and I wish they would have done something similar in this one. Something a little bit extra to prolong the, uh, the life of the game. And then the other thing that, again, I think it's fine once you've played the game once or twice, but it's going to take a little bit of a, you know, it's a little bit of a hurdle, is the ease of play. Especially moving the barbarians around, figuring out that system. You need to be careful. Most players are going to mess this up the first time. Other than that, everything is fantastic. I mean, just exemplary. The theme in this game. I know there's a lot of pandemic games by now, and honestly, if they don't do enough to make them different from one another, it is just pandemic again and underwhelming. Well, I have to say, so far I've really enjoyed the re-themes and the reworkings of these. This is one of the best when it comes to that. This game really feels different. And if the word pandemic wasn't on the cover, sure, you'd play it and say, wow, this is really very similar to pandemic. But it has a lot of new concepts at play. Uh, you know, the idea of rolling dice for combat, the idea of moving around with legions, the way you are stopping the spread with those legions, this idea of advancing towards Rome. There's so much going on here, you know, that are that are tweaks on old concepts or brand new concepts for the Pandemic series anyway, uh, that I really thought were all thematic. They work quite well. The aesthetics, the game looks great. The dice are very nice. All of the components are easy to see on the board. And especially in the aesthetics department, this is a huge leap forward from the previous game, Rising Tide, which I found to not be not just 
unattractive, but had some small usability problems with the clarity of what the board, uh, of what was shown on the board, or the way the board operated. So in this one, there are none of those issues. Very happy with that. The game length. This is slightly longer than Base Pandemic, but it warrants that length. The game feels engaging and tense and interesting the whole way through. Uh, and then lastly, tactics and strategy. There's tons here to consider. There is some luck, that's certainly true. You are rolling dice, but that can uh, be dealt with. And it you know simulates this idea of war, of combat. You cannot count on winning those fights all the time. You cannot count on having your legions not be attacked or be ambushed. They are, you know, every everything that is in here and is not tactically driven and, and goes to luck instead has a reason that works thematically. And I really like that. So overall, Pandemic Fall of Rome is yet another stellar entry in the Pandemic series of games. For me, as I said, I still like Pandemic, the original game with all of those expansions, all of that rich content, the best. And second for me is Iberia. It's gorgeous, it has a lot of replayability, it has some seriously interesting long-term planning. Love that game. But I think this is next after that, you know? Because, uh, as I said, just so rich, so thematic, such an engaging concept that was handled with absolute care and clarity. So, Pandemic Fall of Rome, for me, gets uh, a, a very, very strong seal of excellence. If you enjoy this series, if you enjoy cooperation games, if you enjoy uh, the Roman theme, I would say definitely get your hands on this game. And so that's it for me. Thanks everybody for tuning in and checking this out. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com.